Hi, I'm going to talk to you now about this uh, Renner PLC question. It came from Section C of the 2019 Paper 2, 7127-2, and it's one on decision making. So this one is um, discussing the possibility of closing a loss making department. It contains elements of marginal costing, absorption costing, um, and we can even throw in some activity based costing as part of our discussion of you know, limitations and, and suggestions, recommendations, um, and so on. Let me just... So Renner's given us the following information. I've broken this question down, so we're not kind of looking at the whole thing. If you want to get a copy of the whole question, have a look in the links. I've given you the link um, to the AQA website, so you can call up a copy of the paper and the mark scheme. But basically, I've got three departments, and this is the situation. Currently making a contribution, so remember that's the sales revenue minus the variable cost. So each department is coming up with a positive contribution, and that contribution is going towards total overhead. So we can see there, 84,300 for department one. So they're going to be making a profit. Department two's overheads are higher than the contribution. So that's going to be turning in a loss. And department three, a small profit because the overheads are lower than the contribution. It tells us here that total overheads include factory rent, machinery depreciation, and supervisor salaries, and that all overheads are apportioned on the basis of floor area. A departmental supervisor does not think that the overheads have been apportioned fairly so let's read on then so we can crunch the numbers we can work out what profit or loss is being made by each department and in total so um, this is one i've just cut and pasted from the the mark scheme but you can see there the, quite the uh, numbers that we talked about a moment ago um, so department one is making a profit of 16860 department two a loss of 7710 and department three, a profit of 4338. As I said before, they're all offering a positive contribution and overall the organization is profitable. They made a profit of 13,488. Okay. So additional information, something we should probably pick up on. A departmental supervisor does not think the overheads have been apportioned fairly. So do we agree with that? Ask yourself, what is the current basis or method of apportionment? So it tells us that they're using floor area for everything. Now, if we remember, that includes things like depreciation, um, supervisors' salaries, and so on. So, obviously, floor area is a suitable um, basis for apportioning um, something like rent or heat and light or insurance, possibly, or business rates. But what basis would be fairer for, for rent? Is there a fairer basis for rent? I don't think so. I think we've got it right there. It should be on floor area, but depreciation. Floor area has got nothing to do really with depreciation. Depreciation is based on the value of the assets. So maybe the cost or the net book value of the assets would be a fairer method to uh, apportion those overheads. Supervisor's salaries, we could look at the amount of time the supervisor spends in each of the departments or simply look at the number of employees they're supervising. We might find that one department is particularly um, automated. So there aren't many employees in there. So therefore, you'd think that they would um, get lower supervisor salaries allocated or um, apportioned to them. So how would it change things? We don't know if overheads were allocated more fairly. We're not being given enough information. We're not given a breakdown of the overheads um, or the number of employees or the value of the machinery. So we can't actually do any calculations. We can just raise that later on as a, a limitation. So it could well be that if we rearrange the way that the overheads were apportioned, um, Department 2 might not be making a loss after all. They could all be making a profit or a different department might be making a loss. We don't know. We can just ask the question. OK. So more information then. The management wants to ensure that the business maximizes profitability and it's under pressure from the owners who are increasingly demanding higher returns on their investment. They've demanded at least a 50 percent increase in overall profit in the next financial period. OK, so what can we do with this information? Well, can we do some more calculations? So how much profit would that be? What was the existing level of profit? So currently it was 13,488. We worked that out a moment ago. If we bump that up by 50 percent, the profit would be 20,232. So in all our future discussions, calculations, we need to bear that figure um, in mind. Even more information, there's quite a lot of information to wade through in this question. Um, as a strategy to make optimum use of the business resources, the management is proposing to close any loss making department. So that's department two currently and use this space instead to expand the most profitable, 
I can't even say it, profitable department by 40%. So that's department one, they're thinking of um, expanding by 40%. There is a possibility that some staff could be redeployed to another department following any closure. The existing staff are both experienced and skilled, that's good. However, there is a culture where change is opposed and in the past, less radical changes have resulted in industrial action being taken. So quite topical at the moment with all the the rail strikes and what have you. Um, Staff would also need to be retrained at an overall cost of 7,500. So quite a large paragraph there containing quite a large amount of information. So again, let's think what we can do with that. There is an extra little bit as well. Due to experiencing some cash flow problems, the business has got an existing short term loan as well as a bank overdraft facility. So, okay, we're going to bump up. Department one by 40%, we're gonna close department two. We're gonna try and retrain the staff. That's gonna cost us 7,500, but we've already got an overdraft and a short-term loan. So are we gonna be able to afford to pay that seven and a half thousand pounds? Let's see if we can do some more calculations. So just a reminder here, this was the original scenario. So that's what we calculated from the original data that was given to us. What would the situation be if they close the loss making department? Is our profit going to miraculously go up by 7710 if we do that? Well, actually, no, they would lose 30,814 contributions. So that would actually reduce profit. But what would happen to the overhead? So at the moment, that department has 38,500 odd of overheads um, allocated to it. So the likelihood is that that will still remain because the company is still going to have to pay rent, um, still going to have to pay supervisors' salaries. Remember, some of it was depreciation, so that may or may not disappear depending on what we do with the machinery in Department 2. Let's look at how much profit would be generated by increasing Department 1's output by 40%. So again, we don't need to think about profit. Beware of just increasing the profit by 40%. We actually want to bump up the contribution because the likelihood is that these overheads won't increase by 40%. So it's not as simplistic as just taking the profit. We need to work on the contribution here. So we're losing the contribution for department two, but we're gaining 40% in department one. Okay, so that's gonna gain us an extra 40,464. So our profit will be up by the 40,464, but it will be down by the 38,40 contribution. Okay, so the overheads, as I said before, it's unlikely that these are all just going to disappear. The the overheads in Department 2, some of them may well disappear. Um, Department 1, it's unlikely that they'll increase. um, You know, we could look at things like stepped fixed costs, but uh, the likelihood is that there'll be some spare floor space in Department 2 that we can use. So it's not like we're going to get a sudden step up in the uh, in the cost of rent. So the likelihood, as I said, it's not going to increase, include increase hugely because uh, floor area will be freed up if we close department two as will the supervisor's uh, time so we can redeploy the supervisor maybe even redeploy machinery from department two into department one um, possibly even sell it we'll look at that in a moment so overall the change is going to mean that um, the contribution um, for department one will be 141624 Department three's contribution, still the same as it was before, 40,488. And the total overheads, just added up all three figures of 159,000 will remain. So that will give us a profit of 23,112. We could have recalculated that quite simply if we go back to that previous slide. So we could have said, well, the original profit was 13,488. If we take off the lost contribution, 38,40, and we add on gain in contribution 4464 we will end up with the same profit figure 23112 so that is more than the 20232 that we calculated earlier um, although they are going to have to pay an extra 7500 for training costs so that will reduce profit in the short term not necessarily you know in the long term it's going to be a one off payment that 7500 though is also going to deplete our cash flow so the fact that we've got an overdraft you know can we afford the 7500 for training costs, we might need to uh, think about that. So let's summarize the financial pros and cons. We've done some calculations. We've identified what the problem is. They want us to uh, make a recommendation, I think, of uh, whether or not they should go ahead with this strategy. So for the uh, strategy, profits will increase by 9624. That's the difference between the original profit and what we're forecasting. 
It will increase um, by more than 50%. We can work that out by taking the increase, 9624, relating it back to the original profit, 13488 times 100, means that we've actually made an increase of 71.35%. Obviously, that depends on all the, the forecasts being accurate, but that is certainly more than the 50% that the owner's wanting um, to uh, achieve. So they could sell some unused machinery from department two. That might improve their cash flow again in the short term. And if they do get rid of some machinery, then depreciation will come down and that will increase profits. Then the increased sales obviously are going to uh, boost our profits and we should see a greater return for the owners and the investors. In terms of the cons then for doing this financial con, seven and a half thousand is going to reduce profit in the short term and it will also make a dent in our cash flow for the current period. Could be some redundancy costs if some staff that can't be redeployed or don't want to be redeployed from department two to department one, then um, there could be some costs there. Um, and the cash flow may suffer. So we've got these extra sales. So we've got the increased sales of 40%, hopefully, if our forecasts are accurate. That will, will boost our profits. But don't forget that if we're selling these things on a credit basis, then our cash flow may actually suffer in the short term because we're going to have to pay out lots of costs, carry on paying wages. And it may take a month or two before we receive any cash flow from those sales. OK, so that's the financial. We can see that overall, in terms of the financial pros and cons, we've got far more advantages than we've got disadvantages. Let's think then about the non-financial factors. So what do we need to consider there? So this one, I think, is more weighted the other way. So there's not much in favour of it, really. I mean, some of the employees may be happy to gain new skills, and that could lead to better prospects, higher pay, that kind of thing. Um, the need for additional materials for Department 1. So we're going to be buying in bigger quantities. So we might achieve some economies of scale there, could lead to better trade discounts, etc. But against, is it realistic to assume that Department 1 could just increase production and sales by 40%? We don't know. Um, the employees with new skills, so we've just paid 7,500 to have them retrained, they may demand, demand higher pay, that will reduce our profits, um, or they may seek alternative employment, so we could retrain them and then lose them. Um, some of our employees are going to be resistant to change. We've already seen that. Um, they've threatened strike action in the past, and that could affect the uh, morale and motivation of the workforce, um, as will the redundancy. So if we need to make staff redundant, um, then the remaining staff may be a bit disaffected. It might have impact on their morale. And all of this could lead to a chance of strike action. And if they do go on strike, we've got a loss of production. We might be unable to satisfy customer demand, and that could cause damage to our brand reputation. So quite a lot of against. So what we've done here is kind of balanced things. So we could see that, you know, if we went back to the previous slide, let's just go back to that now. Actually, maybe that was a mistake. But uh, the previous slide obviously showed that there were far more pros in financial terms, potentially than cons, but obviously, as long as the, uh, the forecasts were accurate. But in terms of the non financial factors, we can see there that there's a good number against and only a couple of points for the, uh, the strategy. Okay. So what limitations, what other factors do we need to consider? Is there any other information that we think would be helpful? So we could ask are the figures correct? What are the demand um, forecasts? You know, is it realistic that we can expect to sell 40% more of whatever department one is making? Is there any interdependency between the products um, that each department produces? Is one a loss leader? Do we have to make product one in order to be able to sell product two or vice versa? Um, you know, do customers expect a range of things? Are the products that are produced, you know, part of the package um, that go together? We need to consider that. Um, overheads have been apportioned on the basis of floor area. Is this fair? And we've talked about that in detail earlier on. Um, if it's not fair, then that may well change things. So the profit or loss for each department may be incorrect. Um, could we apportion overheads using more appropriate bases? So could we use machine cost or net book value for the depreciation, the number of staff that are being supervised um, in order to um, apportion the supervisor's salaries between the departments? Um, it may be more appropriate to base the decision on marginal costing, so actually to ignore the overheads altogether because they are likely to remain regardless of changes to the departments. Yes, we may lose a bit of depreciation, um, but overall, they're not likely to change very much. The rent, for example, is going to stay the same um, no matter how many different departments you have operating in the building. 
um, maybe they should consider activity-based costing. So that should be a, a more accurate or a fairer way to apportion the overheads because we're using cost pools there and cost drivers. So overheads will be attributed to output on the basis of um, you know, the uh, consumption of those activities. So things made in bigger batches um, would be charged proportionately less overhead. And I've recorded some videos uh, on activity-based costing questions for you to, to look at if you want more information about that. So decision time, we've got to weigh up the pros and cons. Um, having considered the financial and non-financial factors, you now have to recommend whether or not managements should proceed with their proposed strategy. Now, like with all of these, there's no right or wrong answer, but you do need to give some clear advice and you need to justify it. So you could say that I recommend they go ahead with the strategy as that will increase profits by more than 50% and keep the owners and other stakeholders happy. Or you could say, I do not recommend that they proceed with the strategy due to the risk of strike action, which would disrupt production and damage their brand reputation. So choose which way you're going to go for or against overall and why pick some sort of compelling reasons. And, you know, these aren't the only potential answers you could come up with. But do not sit on the fence with this one. They want some clear recommendations. They don't want you to say, well, they could because of this and they might not because of that. They want you to say, yes, they should or no, they shouldn't be really clear. So hopefully that's given you some guidance. You can practice writing your question now and then have a look at the mark scheme and see whether you got close to the perfect answer. Remember, we're aiming for, for 25 marks. And again, just a reminder that if you don't do the advice bit, the recommendation in this case, you will be stuck with just five out of 25. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed the video um, and I can keep you up to date with, uh, with new releases. Thanks very much for watching.